So one of the things I talk about on the podcast fairly regularly is offshore wind operations because it's kind of a mystery, right? If you're um, looking at an onshore wind farm or if you've been in oil and gas, you've been in construction industry, you've seen people build highways. These are massive infrastructure projects, but you see what's going on. You see a dozer driving or a surveyor out there or some people moving drainage stuff around. You can see all of that. But when you get to offshore wind, you can't see any of that. You see a couple of vessels on the surface driving around, but you cannot see anything that's going on underneath them. And that's where all the work is happening. So Video Ray is a, is a part of that solution. Now, they're in PES Wind Magazine this, uh, this quarter talking about off, offshore wind inspections. Now, they don't just do inspections with their equipment on the, on the operation side. They do it during development, during construction, and during operations. So think of what a video ray offers as a solution, being a basically a drone that you see in the air. Again, I'm trying to relate it to something everybody's seen, uh, except for much more expensive and something that swims and <laughs> swims subsea. So uh, the, it's, it's not, I'm not going to say it's trivial to build a drone but it's not super difficult. The concepts are pretty easy. Uh, flying in air and communications and positioning is fairly easy compared to subsea because when you go subsea, you cannot communicate very well. You cannot position very well. Cameras are hard to use because uh, contrary to popular belief, not everything subsea looks like the Great Barrier Reef that's beautiful and blue and clear. Um, so there's a lot of uh, technology that goes into these these kits that they send subsea. So in the industry, they're called ROVs. We think about them as remotely operated vehicles. And Video Ray makes uh, a couple of different models, but they're in the inspection class. So there's a couple of different ones. There's you know, like your your hobbyist that looks like kind of a you know a drone that's smaller. Then you have the inspection class ROVs, which is what Video Ray makes that are like twenty to forty pounds or so. You know about the size of I don't know like a cooler, like a Yeti cooler or something like that. And then you go to the next level of things, which is like an intervention and work class ROVs. And work class ROVs can be the size of a truck. They're, they're freaking huge. Uh, but these, these pieces of kit that they have, they can do all kinds of things. They can inspect things visually. They can inspect with sonar. They can have put manipulators, little hands on them. They can grab things off the floor or off the seafloor. They can test with uh, you know, NDT probes so you can check the thickness of metal. You can check cathodic protection on things, which is basically the kind of me metal blocks you put subsea to combat the seawater and alkaline um, steel interact or metal interactions. So they can do a lot of things. If you're if you're on an SOV offshore or on any kind of construction vessel, these little ROVs are out there. They're they're watching rock dumps to make sure that they land in the right place. They're watching uh, cable inspection. They're doing cable inspections. They're watching cable hookups. Sometimes the work class ROV is down there and the inspection class is standing off just to watch what they're doing. They're mapping things. They can map, map rock dumps, map the, the surface of the, of the floor. They can do visual inspections. They can create 3D uh, models of monopiles and uh, all kinds of things subsea. So they're, they're very powerful tools. Um, I think that Video Ray's got about 4,000 of them. When I was in oil and gas, Video Ray was a company that you thought of all the time. Hey, we got to get this inspection class ROV. Yeah, grab one of those Video Ray. Boom, throw that on board. That was something we always use. They're using the defense space, oil and gas, civil construction, everything offshore, inspecting nu nuclear plants, all kinds of cool stuff. Um, so think of them as a, a drone in the sky, but underwater. However, they're much more advanced. Uh, Video Ray's starting to use AI to do station keeping and model building and inspections. Because if you're driving down a pipeline with a ROV, you're just going pipe joint, pipe joint. Oh, a little bit of free span there. It's very monotonous and very uh, manual for, for the operator to do. But with AI, now you can uh, automate a lot of those tools. So uh, the, the, the last bit I would say here, and this is a, a, an idea, because we're always looking for what could be better in the wind industry, what's innovation, what's cool. If I was an inspection company that had people mobilized around the world with drones inspecting blades, cells, transition pieces offshore, which are part of regular tenders now, I would also start to include inspecting subsea at the same time. And here's the reason. You're already there. You already have specialized employees out there, and the vessel is standing by while you fly with the drone. You might as well throw 
the ROV overboard and do the sub C portion of the inspection at the same time. Now you can deliver the client value add. So you've got an inspection from the tip of the blade all the way to the sea floor, and you're using the same people and the same vessel time. And that's the big thing that costs offshore. So if you want to do that as an inspection company, call me, I'll walk you through. So it sounds like there could be some acquisitions in the, uh, the in remote inspection space. There should be. And if, and it, yeah, this is the big thing too. Like if you're, if you're a company that has a platform that's looking at assets that, you know, you have like, like sky specs has the nice horizons platform or, you know, everybody at perceptual robotics has their platform and Zeitview has their platform and thread has their platform. You should be putting in an, a module in that to manage that sub C data at the same time. And if you want to stay abreast of all the cool technology pieces in the wind industry in 2024, you better get the Q4 edition of PES Win from 2023 because it is full of cool technology and uh, it has a, a lot about what's about to happen. So you're going to see a lot of technology in PES Wind in this latest, R, latest edition. You'll see it out in the field uh, coming up in a couple of months when it warms up up, up in the Northern Hemisphere. So. Check it out. You can go to PESWin.com. You can get a, a free uh, download, and you can read about all the things we, we talk about in the podcast. <laughs>